SBCC Scheinfeld Center new venture challenge. 20 finalists are ready to impress our expert panel of judges. New Venture Challenge judges and mentors from throughout Santa Barbara County offer student entrepreneurs decades of real-world experience to help them succeed, such as Natalie Jensak, Julie Sampson, and Michael Holliday, who are veterans at advising aspiring entrepreneurs. Past judges identified New Venture Challenge winner Spencer Shulam, who made a strong impression with WeDo, an app to help us all organize our lives better. Who will be the winners this year? Port your favorite student entrepreneurs at the Scheinfeld New Venture Challenge competition. Welcome. Welcome to the ninth annual New Venture Challenge Business Plan and Pitch Competition. <laughs> My name is Julie Sampson. I serve as the director of the Scheinfeld Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation here at Santa Barbara City College. We are a hub of, uh, for the development of entrepreneurs um, at SBC. SBCC and in the community we focus on the development of globally competent entrepreneurs and uh, what we have going on today as you are well aware is that we have 10 teams who were selected as finalists based on their business plan submissions and today they will present to you their most persuasive pitch about why their ventures uh, promise success and they're doing this in the pursuit of uh, cash and awards um, and scholarship opportunities. So we have teams from San Marcos High School and we warmly welcome Anacapa High School who I believe it's the first time that they're competing in this competition. So let's give them a hand. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, let's just see all of you. So San Marcos and Anacapa students, let's stand up and give you a round of applause here. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Welcome, welcome. Good job, just even that you're here. It's amazing. And they are only here because we know the work that mentors and their teachers have done with all of you. So for the mentors and teachers and people who have helped these students, could you stand up? Because you need some recognition too. <laughs> yeah. You're wonderful, thank you so much. Okay, to each and every one of our finalists here, we wish you success today and this event is just the start of even greater things to come. While only three teams will walk away with the award today, everybody will go home richer with the spirit of entrepreneurship here. And on that note, as a follow-on, I encourage everybody here to please join me in creating a positive, supportive, distraction-free, competitive environment so that these teams can shine. And what I'd like to do now is move on to our sponsors. The awards that were available today are only by the generous uh, donations of our sponsors here. And um, also, everybody who is running this event, uh, our judges, the hands-on help that you've had, they're all contributing their time and they are representing these companies here. So let's give all of them a hand. And our judges today are incredible. I'm so excited that they're here. Um, so each one of these judges has not only expertise in their field, but they also bring experience as entrepreneurs where entrepreneurship has helped change their lives and also the lives of others. And so I want to introduce you to them. They are, uh, there's a, a bio, um, a professional bio 
in the program that you have, I'm not going to read that word by word. Instead, I had the opportunity to speak with each of these entrepreneurs, and I want to share with you a bit of what they had to say. So along with in the um, spirit of entrepreneurship changes lives, I would like to introduce you first to an uh, to a student, uh, a former student of Santa Barbara City College. Her name is Rochelle Monet. And, yeah. So, <laughs> so Rochelle went through our program in 2016 and uh, took Enterprise Launch and has since moved uh, really quite quickly into launching her own brand. It's the Umbi brand that specializes in creating products that um, support dog health and wellness and also their training. And uh, her flagship, flagship uh, product is Umbi Dog Bed. That is a, a bed that takes the place of a crate. And it's very ingenious in that it's, it consists of a harness and a bed. And the way it works is if the dog tries to get off the bed, um, the harness system brings that dog to a sitting or laying down position. And so what's fabulous about this besides the product is that Rochelle represents one of the fastest growing demographics of entrepreneurs here um, in the US, which is African-American women. And uh, one of the things that she told me is that she wants to be a great example for others, you know, that you can do what you want to do in life, you know, and nothing can hold you down. So thank you, Rochelle. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'd like to introduce you to Victoria Fine. So Victoria is amazing in that she is a marketing and brand expert, and she brings uh, commerce together with uh, drawing out social good in the brands. And what's interesting about Victoria is that she really embraces the adventure that entrepreneurship can bring into your lifestyle. For instance, she spent a year running her business from a sailboat, and she was also in Puerto Rico when uh, the hurricane came through there and caused devastation, and she was needing to run her business from afar, relying on her team um, that was not in Puerto Rico to keep the business going. And so her favorite thing is what entrepreneurship allows her to do in life, the freedom and the adventure. So thank you so much, Victoria, for being here. <laughs> so Jose Huitron is the founder of Hub81 and also Santa Maria Valley Tech. And uh, so he is a natural founder. And one of the things that he focuses on, it, he told me that in Santa Maria, there's a lot of Latino, L Latino people who are into agriculture. But what he is really trying to bring it into the picture is that technology is also another place that has a lot of room for the Latino population to uh, create businesses, create wonderful work for not only themselves and others, but also you know, to support the community up there. And he's done beautiful work in that way. So please uh, welcome Jose. <laughs> Okay, so let's get on to the heart of uh, the matter here, and I'll tell you. I'm t I'll tell you kind of how things are going to run here. So um, each there are ten teams. Each team will present an eight-minute pitch. We have a timer down here on, um, in this area here. The, if you're pitching, you'll be able to see the time that you have left there. Um, after the eight minutes is up, you'll hear a timer. If you're still speaking when the timer goes off, then you can complete your non-run-on sentence. <laughs> and, um, and then we will immediately go into two minutes of uh, questions from the judges. This isn't a time they aren't going to be giving you feedback, but actually just asking questions to clarify anything about your venture that they need to understand better. 
Um, and then we'll just roll through the 10 pitches. After that, you'll take your break and we'll determine the, the judges will determine the winners and we'll come back in and award it. And um, then we'll go from there. Okay, so any questions about any of that? Okay, well, I think you're ready for me to get off the microphone and meet our first team up to bat. So I would like to welcome to the stage Fiona Kinsella Designs. Fiona Kinsella. Hi, I'm Fiona, founder of Fiona Kinsella Designs. Thank you for the opportunity to present today. I'm really excited to share my business with all of you. I first started making jewelry when I was 11 years old. I was drawn to beautiful gems and stones, and I started creating from there. An old family friend gave me a box of old materials, and from there I started making my own pieces. I then started selling to friends and family and realized that my jewelry became very popular. I created my own website and found that the opportunity in this market allowed me to make money out of doing something that I love. The jewelry market in the United States is $70 billion. For my specific niche, which is semi-precious stones, it is $10 billion. Fiona Kinsella Designs hopes to capture 2% of this market. The product. My business partner, Ellie Hilzer, will be passing around some of the product. Fiona Kinsella Designs is 100% handmade jewelry. I handcraft all of my pieces and hand source all of my materials. We're unique from other competitors because we follow fashion forward trends and selling our jewelry at an affordable price. I sell bracelets, necklaces, and rings in a variety of styles and colors. The price range is between $35 and $200. The average ring price is $40. The average bracelet price is also $40. And the average necklace price is $65. I do have some specialty pieces that are between $100 and $200 for more higher quality materials. The target market, Fiona Kinsella Designs, um, targets customers that are women ages 16 to 65 in the United States. Here you can see an example of the target market in the US of 120 million and in Santa Barbara of 28,000. For the revenue model, it cost me $20 to make each unit. I sell the unit for an average of $60 and get a total profit of $40. Right now I'm getting revenue by selling in a local retailer through the online website that I've created and by doing pop-ups and shopping parties at home. I hope to grow my revenue by getting in five more local retailers and expanding my website. For marketing and distribution channels, I have developed a website here and an Instagram page on the right. I started these pages to get more attraction to my business and I hope to grow my Instagram following by pairing up with a social media influencer. This way I'll be able to drive more traffic to my website. For financial projections, um, for 2019, I hope to sell five units per week. Each unit will be priced at $60, and that will give me total revenue of $15,600. For 2020, I would like to sell 20 units per week at $80, which will give me a total of $83,200. In order to do this, I will be selling in more retailing stores and to be um, adding more products to my website. For funding, I'm asking $10,000. A majority of this money will be used towards materials. This way, I'll be able to create more product and be able to sell more jewelry. I will also be using $500 for the website to add more website features. I will also be using $1,000 for marketing, which I'll pay social media influencers, $2,000 for labor, and $500 for overall business development. The team is myself, Fiona, the CEO and founder of the company, I handle day-to-day -day operations, website maintenance, and I design and create the product. Recently, Ellie Hilzer joined the company, and she is the CMO of my company and oversees the marketing through the social media platforms. My advisors, Jamie DeVries and Jillian Heckman, are the directors of the Entrepreneurship Academy at San Marcos and of Kids Helping Kids. Together, they've helped me to expand and grow my business. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions? And judges. 
Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, scaling up your production and how you plan on doing that as you continue to make more products in the coming year? Yeah, so I currently sell at a local retailer salon and spa called Walter Claudio, and I plan to do um, to grow it into more five more stores by just going into the stores downtown and in Montecito and presenting my jewelry to them, and then um, by also doing in-home parties and by using social media to get. But who who is going to make them with you, or who's going to be making your product as you scale up? How are you using my, that labor cost? My business partner Ellie. Oh, great. You said that you're going to use $500 for website features. What features? Will you I want to be able to do, right now what's trending on the website is a spinning, have my jewelry on a display and have it be able to spin in 3D. So I would like to add that. And then also other different features that are like as trends happen for website. Do you have sales? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> How many? How many? How many sales? Mm -hmm. um, I've made about $4,000. How are you choosing uh, what new products to make? Do you do research around that? or? Yeah, so I'm following um, jewelry trends on social media, and then I also just come up with some of my designs by what I like. Great, thank you. Where do you get your um, like stones from? So I go to um, a jewelry district in LA, and I also go to um, j the gem fair at O'Warren has a jewelry market, and I can buy my um, pieces and stones from vendors there. So competitive space, right? A lot of options. How do you see yourself differentiating or really making a mark? Well, for me, each piece is handmade and uniquely designed. And um, I have my jewelry looks like a lot of other companies, but it is affordable and um, um, high quality. Thank you, judges. Thank you, Fiona. Okay. Next up, we have Muses, and I hope I say it right, Zaina Shinar. Shakur. Um, I am one of the founders of Muses. As I am wrapping up my last year of high school, I find it difficult to keep track of dates, deadlines, appointments, and other events that I have going on. Because of the stress and disorganization that, I, that came with all of that, I decided to start a bullet journal. Some of you may not even know what a bullet journal is. A bullet journal is a method of organization in which the user uses a planner or journal to plan, reflect, and mediate their busy lives. Um, some challenges that arise with bullet journals is because they require a lot of creativity and they are uniquely tailored to each individual. It can be overwhelming to figure out a starting point. But this is where we come in. Our solution is to offer stencils for designs, customizable packages to, for the utensils and stationery you may need, and video tutorials for inspiration, all to help you get started with your bullet journal. Our target market is anybody who needs a way to de-stress and organize their lifestyle. But based on research that we have conducted, we will be focusing primarily on females ages 14 to 30 years old who live in Southern California. In 2018, there was an 18% increase in the bullet journal market. And in this market, 61% of users buy their tools and materials online. And did you know that, 40, that um, bullet journal users spend $40 more on average on office supplies each year? Right now, social media is going to be our number one marketing tool. Our first plan of action is to partner with social influencers and YouTubers who create bullet journal content and get, provide them with promotional codes for them and their subscribers to use on our website and um, in order to gain and maintain traction and engagement on our website, which is where we will be distributing our product. Right now, each stencil will be sold for $6.50. They cost $3.50 to make, and which leaves Muses with $3 in profit. Because we expect to sell 1,000 stencils in our first year, we um, foresee a $3,000 profit for year one. In the long term, we, be, we plan to be a company that manufactures all stationery that you may need for a bullet journal all on our own. And we also plan to implement a subscription package model in which the user will receive a, a package biannually, and this will increase and ensure customer loyalty. 
our ask is for $2,000, and this will be um, put towards startup costs, um, buying a domain for our web website, and also finding a um, more efficient way to manufacture our stencils, because right now we are making them by hand. This is our team. We have Rina Santiago, who is our CEO. I am uses CMO. Camille Mock is our COO, and Juliet Dodson is our CFO. We are accompanied by our advisors, Ms. Heckman and Mr. DeVries, who are the director of San Marcos Entrepreneurship Academy and the Kids Helping Kids program, respectively. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, my first question for you is, how big is the bullet journal market? The bullet journal market is um, really big. It's blowing up right now just because um, of the trends in social media and because of how visually and aesthetically pleasing that they are. And so um, we're seeing a constant increase with, as years go by. How long does it take you to make each stencil? Um, because we, are, we have a sample right now of a bullet journal and a stencil, if you would like to see. And um, our stencils right now, because we're still trying to figure out the kinks of how to exactly make it, we're, we spend about um, an hour making three. Can you tell me how your uh, stencils are different as bullet journal stencils to traditional stencils? Well, they... Um, what makes us different is that there's nobody on the market yet who creates stencils and packages for specifically bullet journals. And there are people who make stencils already for their bullet journals, but they do it for themselves. And so what we bring to market is that um, area where you can buy it so that way you know how to get started. So in, in terms of existing types of products, I, I think of like Evernote, and so I don't know, I've just the appeal of using something like a bullet journal. So you're not gonna sell bullet journals, you're gonna sell te uh, stencils. Right now we plan to start just with stencils just because that's what's um, easiest for us to manufacture. But in the long term, we plan to start manufacturing the journals and the pens and the stickers that might that go with the bullet journal. What kind of competition have you seen thus far? Thus far, there's no one in the market who does exactly what we do, so we would be the first. How did you determine your target market? Um, based on research that we conducted, and we, we created a survey, and we sent it out to people in our school, and then, so uh, we, we sent it out to more people. Excellent. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage Bombies and Kayla Black. My name is Kayla Black, and I am a team leader for my entrepreneur group at Anacapa School, which is where we came up with the idea for Bombies Food Truck. Being a high schooler myself, I, am per I can personally attest that 30 minutes is not enough time to find quick, delicious, and affordable food. This is why my team invented Bombies Food Truck. Bombies brings quick, delicious, and affordable food directly to the Santa Barbara High School. Our services saves Santa Barbara High School's time and energy searching for food. We have chosen Santa Barbara High School as our primary target market because of the vast number of potential customers in such a small area. The food truck industry is rapidly growing. In the past five years, the food truck industry has grown annually 7.9%, whereas in comparison, the restaurant industry has only grown 2%. It is time for Santa Barbara to take advantage of this opportunity. This image shows that food trucks are the future. Food trucks are less risk, extremely flexible, and diverse, whereas restaurants are high risk and repetitive. Who does not want to have an awesome food truck in their backyard? This is our market analysis of Santa Barbara High School. Based on surveys and other data from Santa Barbara High School, we have estimated on the low side that one in every six students will buy our food. One in every six students out of the Santa Barbara students who go out to eat is 160 students, and that is a high number of potential customers. This is a market analysis 
of West Beach, which will be uh, Bombi's secondary location. I'm sorry, one second. I have my cards mixed up. Since Bombi has such a short window at Santa Barbara High School and such a big population to feed, we will be offering pre-prepared meals along with pre-ordering and pre-paying options on our website. Picture this, you're walking, swimming, and playing at the beach, and you're hungry. Do you want to wait in line and spend $30 on a low-quality meal at the harbor, or do you want to walk a few feet for a quick, affordable, delicious meal and go right back to having fun? Bombi's food truck supplies you with exactly this. We also have a monthly rotating menu which will keep our customers coming back lunch after lunch. In 2017, approximately 4 million people visited the beaches in Santa Barbara. That leaves Bombies with approximately 400,000 potential customers. This high number gives Bombies the potential to succeed. We compared Bombies to some of our major competitors using these five categories. Food quality, price, service quality, convenience, and diversity. If you'll please draw your attention to the blue line re representing Bombies, you can see Bombies excels in three out of the five categories, whereas the competition only excels in one. We chose these competitors because they are close to Santa Barbara High School and offer, and there are popular locations already. The shop, for example, is popular because they have good food and are close to the high school. Our goal is to bring this exact opportunity to Santa Barbara High School. These are the same competitors as the last slide, but presented in a less busy way. If I can draw your attention to how many strengths and weaknesses Bombi has compared to our competitors. Bombi's strengths include high, high food quality, good services, convenience, and a rotating menu. Each of our major competitors have at least three weaknesses, where we only have one. Our only weakness is price, but because of our offerings, I think we are very worth it. Through surveys and optional pricing calculations, Bombi's found that selling each meal for approximately $10 creates a perfect balance between value and quality. With the average mar marginal cost of each meal at $4.25, Bombi's will make a profit of $5.75 per meal. This is a big profit once you take into account. We will be selling approximately 160 meals per day just at Santa Barbara High School. This is a little under $1,000 a day. One might ask, what makes your food truck special? Our food truck is special because we uniquely offer teens the opportunity to write positive messages on our food truck and we decorate our food truck with the school colors and teams, making it homelike and festive. In addition, over the weekends, we donate any leftover food to the people in need of Santa Barbara. Our advertising strategy is to hang flyers around Santa Barbara High School. And as we all know, high schools love to gossip. So we are depending on them to spread the word. People can also track us and explore our menu on our online website. Taking in our sales from both the high school and the beach, we expect a net profit for the first year to be approximately $1 million. Now I know that's a big number, but stick with me. This is not taking into account our fixed costs, which are approximately $34,300, and our marginal costs, which are approximately $800,000. If we take these costs in account, our profit for the first year will be $200,000. This is our management team and advisory board. An important member of our advisory board is Mally Helm. Being a renowned chef and restaurant owner, Mally has played an important role in making sure our business is feasible and will be successful. With the profit we are bringing in, it is guaranteed that our investors will get their $500,000 back plus an extra $15,000 with a 6% annual interest we are offering. To launch this business opportunity, we are only seeking $50,000. Thank you for listening, and your first meal at Bombi's Food Truck is on us. <laughs>
this is our management team. They're here to help me <laughs> answer <laughs> questions. <laughs> are there any laws in Santa Barbara that prevent food trucks? There are. So last year, Santa Barbara made a bunch of laws preventing food trucks and, park and parking in certain residential area and zones. And we have researched this, and we've already figured out places where we'd park, both at the Santa Barbara High School and West Beach. Have you done a demo of your product? And if so, can you tell us more about that? We have not done a demo. If we win today, we are planning on using that money to make prototypes and do demos. And a follow-up question is, can you tell us more about your food? Yes, we're going to have a rotating menu, which means monthly, which means every month we are going to this, we're going to have a few staple I items and we're going to switch out all the other food on the menu. And how we decide this is we're going to send surveys to Santa Barbara High School since that's our main target market and they will basically decide what food they want for a month. How did you come up with the name? <laughs> 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 uh, we were just talking and we had this food truck idea and I was like you know if people are going to come it has to be good food it has to be bomb food and um, <laughs> we were kind of like okay that sounds good and then I was like it's called Bombies and um, my group liked it and um, it was kind of a, a recognizable name you're not going to hear that everywhere <laughs> Have you gotten permission from Santa Barbara High School to uh, have a food truck on, on their campus? And We have not yet. We do have a contact, and we have been in contact with some of the faculty members there, and we're still in conversation. Can you tell me a little bit about your market validation? Have you talked to, I might have missed it. Have you talked to other students to see how they feel and, you know, hey, yeah, we're going to come to your trucks? Can I say something? Yeah, we actually yeah. sent out. <laughs> <laughs> We actually conducted uh, several surveys on social media, reaching out to the students at Santa Barbara High. There was high levels of interest, and many students said that they would be interested in regularly visiting our food truck. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, next up, please welcome to the stage Safe Sticks and Daniel Piku. My name is Daniel Cruz, and I am one of the founders of Safe Sticks, an innovative and safer way to drink and enjoy at social events. In the past decade, 20 to 25 percent of college women and 15 percent of college men have been victims of forced sex. This is one of the few problems that we're experiencing currently. One in ten women are victims of facilitated rape, which is rape through the usage of alcoholic drinks and alkaloids and drugs such as rofenil. Additionally, one in ten women are victims of rape, one in six women are victims of rape in general, and one in 72 men are victims of rape as well. Studies have shown that 31% of these victims have developed PTSD, and additionally, six point, are 6.2 times more likely to develop PTSD later in their life. So the solution is Safe Sticks, a toothpick with a thin chemical strip on it that will change color when in the presence of an alkaloid or not in your drink. Compared to its competitors, Safe Sticks is a lot cheaper, more sanitary, discreet, faster, and lighter. Imagine a scenario in which you're walking to a bar and you receive a drink from an anonymous person. With sip chip or drink guard, you'll have to pull out the chip or the coaster, dip your finger in the drink, which automatically makes it unsanitary, have to rub the drink on your finger on a coaster or chip, which makes it totally not discreet anymore, and Wait at least 30 seconds to one minute for your results. Now, imagine the same scenario with safe sticks. You walk into the bar, get the drink from the same anonymous person, you pull out the safe sticks, and immediately you get to put the stick inside the drink and stir it. This automatically makes it more sanitary since you're no longer using your fingers. Additionally, you, get re you receive your results in under 30 seconds and act discreet as it is a totally natural look. For the market analysis, recent studies have shown that females 18 to 24 are more prone to rape than any other age group or gender. However, since the product is for alcoholic drinks mostly, we set the base at 21 years old. 
However, while we, do recognize, while we do not encourage underage drinking, we do recognize that it is an epidemic in our society, so the product is there for any individuals in order to ensure their safety. We plan on targeting 5% of the 21,550 women that fit this target market in Santa Barbara County. And that estimates to around 1,077 females, and we predict that each one will use about three safe sticks. We also plan on targeting bars and college campuses with Greek life and parties, since there is a lot of alcohol present there. For our marketing channels, we intend to mainly market through social media platforms, such as Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Each platform will have its own independent social marketing team, and we expect to start from base nothing and expect to rise to higher ranks through a word of mouth. Additionally, we plan on increasing local advertising to colleges such as Westmont, SBCC, and UCSB, as well as during times of festivals such as the summer solstice or fiesta, we plan on increasing advertising there since a lot of alcoholic drinks are consumed during the time. Lastly, we plan on having meetings with local bars and college campuses in order to put our product into their establishment. Once we have developed a relationship and partnership, we plan on giving them a safe sticks back sticker. By showing this, it shows that their establishment does have safe sticks in it and encourages safe drinking. This greatly reduces their liability since if rape were to incur over in their bar or in college, it would drastically hurt their reputation. For our revenue model, we will start at a base of $10 for three sticks and as you purchase more sticks, the price will go down. For our methods of income, we plan direct sales directly to bars who will sell it to their consumers or directly sell it to our individuals via our online web store. For our year one financial projections, we, we expect of those 1,077 females that we are targeting to use three safe sticks. That will cause a total revenue of $8,174 minus the cost to create the product of $3,715 to give us a total profit of $4,459. For our funds needed, we will require approximately $8,000 for basic startup costs. This includes R&D to find a more advanced chemical for our uh, product, as well as website development, uh, materials, and manufacturing costs. For the goals of Safe Sticks, we plan on increasing our product range to other drinking accessories, such as umbrellas, st uh, stirs, as well as straws. We plan on patenting our product so that our design as well as our function will not be taken by any other companies. Lastly, we plan on developing, developing a more professional website that displays the company's aspirations and morals as well as an easy web store for consumers to purchase our product off of. Our founders are Alex Khalil on the far left, Will Snyder accompanying him, me, Daniel Peruz next to him, and Juan Esparza on the far right. Now, you might be wondering what four guys are doing running a business like this. Well, the answer is simple. All four of us have older sisters going to college, developing independent lives of their own, and we want to make sure that they live their safest life possible and spare them from these terrible uh, events. This pushes and motivates us to create the best possible product, not only just for them, but for everyone around them as well. Our advisors are Jillian Heckman and Jamie DeVries of the San Marcos Entrepreneurship Academy. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit more about the product itself? What it can do now, if you've made a demo of it, uh, what it tests for, any of the actual technicalities and technical details of it. Right, so the product is a toothpick with a chemical strip on it. And so when deposited into a drink, if it detects an alkaloid or drug such as roofies, it will change color and alert the user that there is an alkaloid present in their drink. And where are you manufacturing these? We are planning to have a manufacturing plant set up somewhere in China. But as it stands, we do not know the exact locations. Does it work when you it, tried it? Does it work? 
So we still have to develop a chemical. That's where most of our funds will be using. We are already in contact with a chemical researcher, but we just need the funds to uh, find an exact ingestible chemical. Uh, where did you get your product costs, like your manufacturing costs? So, oh, so we found that the cost of an average toothpick is under one cent. However, uh, for our chemical, we estimated it based off of comparing it to other chemicals uh, that detect alkaloids, such as Zimmerman's reagent. Can you tell me why your primary target market is women as opposed to bars or even men? Yeah. So we have, through our studies, we found that uh, women are, uh, do often are victims of rape more than men. So we want to target this product directly to them in order to drastically reduce those rates. As I mentioned, that one in six standard, we would like to heavily reduce that. How, how has the market responded to the existing competitors? Like, do you see adoption? Have they established their presence? Are people using their product? Right. Um, so SIP Chip just recently developed in December, and it has received a decent amount of attention. However, uh, Drink Guard has not received much attention at all. Thank you, judges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice <laughs> Alrighty, we are about to welcome to the stage One for One and Anne Burdett. Good evening, my name is Anne Burdett and my team's venture is One for One. We are a new brand of reusable water bottles. Our bottles are the same size, shape, and construction as a swell bottle, but we will also engrave whatever design a customer wants. There is also no minimum shipment size for these bottles, which is unique among makers of customized water bottles. The other thing that makes us unique is that for every bottle we sell, we give one person a year of clean water. This is where we got the name One for One. We cater mainly to people between the ages of 14 and 80 who love fashionable and sustainable products as well as giving back. There are many reusable water bottle companies on the market, but what they don't offer is the customization. Most mainstream water bottle companies don't customize bottles for individual customers. You can have like a company logo printed on them, but then you have to order a bulk shipment, which isn't practical for someone who just wants one personalized water bottle. The ones that do offer that only let you engrave a name or initials and not a full design. And what we're offering is that you can engrave something all over the full surface of the bottle, and you only need to order one of them. This demand curve was created from a proprietary survey of potential customers and their, and their maximum willingness to pay. We found that our optimal quantity was about 19% of the target market, and our optimal price was $31.61. We decided to sell the bottles at $31.99 because psychologically that number seems more normal than $31.61. <laughs> and for that price, we would be reaching about 18% of the market. We found the number of people within our target age range in the US from census data, and we found that 71% of those people are in a middle or high income household, which is what our target market is. And we assumed that people buy a new water bottle every three years. From our demand curve, we know the percent who would be willing to buy a bottle at the price we offer. And in total, about 854,000 people would be willing to pay for our bottle. What we didn't know was how many of those people would buy our water bottle and not a competitor's. So we looked at articles online recommending water bottles and estimated the market shares of various companies by counting how many times each one was mentioned. Simple Modern is a brand that sells a similar product, although not customized, and has about the level of popularity that we anticipate. Not as big as Swell, but still relatively known. We estimated their market share to be about 2.03%. But they, and they have been around for 46 months, so we divided that percent by 46 and found a monthly growth rate of about 0.04% per month. Therefore, the number of bottles we sell per month will be the number of bottles sold the previous month, plus the growth rate times the number of people who would be willing to pay. We are online only, which opens our doors to people anywhere in the US, 
minimizes costs, and allows us to offer the customization feature to all our customers. Our price of $31.99 includes both shipping and customization, which is unusual among other manufacturers of water bottles and will delight our customers. I had mentioned that we give back. We do this by donating to Water is Life, a nonprofit that provides water filtration straws to help stop disease. One straw costs $10 and lasts five years. That means that every bottle we sell will provide someone with a year of clean water. Partnering with an existing nonprofit that already has the infrastructure to ship the straws minimizes unnecessary logistical costs. At the end of three years, we will have given straws to over 250,000 people in need. We will market our bottles on Facebook and Instagram, which will have links to get to our website. We will post on our profile page and also run pay-per-click ads on both platforms. Our ads will, fo will feature photos of our bottles being used in various settings by various demographics. We will also be selling on Amazon, which acts as its own advertising platform because people search water bottles and will find us. From a survey of potential customers, we expect to sell 40% of our bottles on our website and 60% on Amazon. And our website is designed to be especially easy to use and will also offer pre-made templates for people that don't want to design their own bottle. We will be making a profit in the first year, specifically by the fourth month. We will be engraving our bottles in Alabama, where rent and minimum wage is low. As you can see, the rate at which we sell our products is growing over time, and by the end of the third year, we will have made a total profit of over $3 million. We will be managed by our four founders, Bella Comadi, Orion Guevara, Mariana Rodriguez, and myself. We also have an advisor, Dr. Dylan Miner, who has his PhD in business administration and is a successful entrepreneur. I am the head of finances, meaning that I will be in charge of making sure our revenues and expenses line up. Bella is the head of advertising, figuring out creative ways to attract attention to our product. Orion is the head of business, making sure we get the best deals with our suppliers. And Mariana is the head of product design, ensuring that our bottles are both functional and fashionable, and developing those templates for engraving onto the bottles or for new lid styles. You may see that there's no CEO or president, which is because the four of us will share responsibilities, profit, and decision-making power equally, and decisions will be made by a majority vote. We're looking for a $25,000 amortized loan, paid back monthly over five years with a 7% annual interest rate, and the investor will earn over $4,000 in interest by the end of the five-year period. The investment will help cover startup costs like machinery and technology, as well as fixed and marginal costs until we break even, such as rent and inventory. Thank you for considering us. Do you have any questions? Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, my first question is, how did you choose customization as your product niche? And uh, tell us more about that, that customization part of your product. Well, and you, if you can walk over to the mic, that would be great. Um, we decided to choose customization, and we saw that um, I was looking for a water bottle not too recently, and I saw all of these other brands didn't allow me to fully customize something. So I was like, why not engrave it? You can literally, it's the easiest way to wrap a design around, and then also by engraving it, when it's scratched or indented or something, the design isn't completely lost and will be projected through it, like when there's still, um, what's the word? When, um, when there's damages done to the bottle, the, the design will still show up clearly. Thank you. Does the cost increase with more intricate designs? No, the cost is the same price for all water bottles, and that includes all customization, which is also unique, because like Swell 
has some customization, but that costs like ten more dollars, and we don't do that. Can you tell me what you would consider to be proprietary or like your unique value, something your secret sauce that where I can't just can't can't come in and start offering customization? Well, most businesses that sell water bottles don't have the individual customization where like because it cuts costs to only offer customization when you're selling a big shipment of bottles. And we're not doing that because we're focusing more on like cutting our costs in other ways, such as having our factory in a state where the rent and minimum wage are low and selling only online. And also other brands rely a lot on brand recognition, like Swell, they rely on having their logo on the bottle and we will have our logo on the bottle, but not as prominent, and we don't consider that to be as important to our business, so we don't need, we don't care that the design might like detract from brand recognition. Thank you, judges. Thank you, one for one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Next up, we welcome to the stage Pressed Apron and Eva Moshito. Alrighty, hi, my name is Eva Moshito, and I'd like you to imagine for a second that you're attending a party or special event, and you want to go chat with a host or hostess, but they're too busy chasing down the caterer, replenishing drinks, or wiping up spills to even say hello. Now, imagine that you are that host or hostess. Sounds stressful, doesn't it? Which is where we come in. We believe that entertaining should be fun and accessible to everyone, which is why we'll be with you every step of the way. So you never have to be the flustered host or hostess again. Enjoy yourself, your guests, and your event with Press Apron. So our problem that we've discovered in Santa Barbara County is that hosts and hostess love to throw parties, but they're overwhelmed by the numerous amount of tasks that are involved in throwing a party. Everything from setting up beforehand, to serving guests, to cleaning up afterwards. Additionally, if a host would like to hire an event service for their event, they usually charge about $200 per hour, which is just not feasible for smaller gatherings and parties. Our solution is Pressed Apron's four-step party system. This simplifies the whole hosting process into four actionable items. So our first step is pre-party planning. We'll be with hosts to send evites, create guest lists, and things like that. Our second step is pre-party setup. So we'll arrive before the event to set up tables and chairs, clean spaces, arrange flowers and cheese plates, and things like that. And then our third step is party serving. We'll attend to guests' needs and hosts' needs so that they can just enjoy their event with their guests. Lastly, we are there to help clean up so hosts never have the burden of having to do that after the guests leave. They can just relax and enjoy the memories of a wonderful event. Pressed Apron is also available for any of or all of these services. So guests can hire us just for evites or just to clean up depending on their individual needs. We charge a package rate, which is our most popular rate, of $16 per server per hour. Additionally, we require a one hour non-refundable deposit upon reservation of the event. So again, we'd like to emphasize that Pressed Apron is much more affordable than the competitors listed here that you may see. These are other prominent event services in Santa Barbara. We are typically about one to $200 less per hour than these services. Our most direct competitors then are friends of hosts and hostesses because they are right within our price range. However, they lack Pressed Apron's attention to de detail and professionalism. So our target market. Out of previous Pressed Apron clients, about 90% have been women, and 95% were women ages 45 to 55 living in the city of Santa Barbara. We additionally target women who have about average annual household incomes of $100,000 or above. So 53,000 people in Santa Barbara County fit this identified target market, and we judge that there is about a 3,392,000 market opportunity for Pressed Apron in Santa Barbara. We plan to work 30 events this year, and if each event is four hours, we expect to gross $3,840 this year. 
We also have a net revenue this year of $777, and that goes directly into the company. So that's after each server is paid $12 an hour, and that includes myself and my business partner, who's not here today. Our main marketing channels. So our first one is our email newsletter, which we newly launched. We sent out our welcome email this morning to 40 new subscribers, so we're very excited about that. Our second channel is through Instagram and Facebook, which is most popular with our target market. And lastly, we also advertise through our website, PrestApron.com. And all these channels reflect Pressed Apron's clean and simple brand identity. So here is our team. I, myself, Ava Moshito, am a co-founder with Emily Steidel. Our advisors are Rachel Steidel, a local entrepreneur, former owner of ParentClick.com and current brand consultant and Tammy Cronin, who is transitioning out of her own catering business and into brand and sales management for the Perfect Bite Company. And again, all of our team are really focused on providing local job opportunities for youth so that they have some job experience when they move on to college. Press Apron is seeking $2,500 in order to finance a new promotional video, seasonal advertising campaigns, and staff training. Thank you for supporting Press Apron. Are there any questions? Have you done any events? Yes, we have. So we've been op in operation for a year. We grossed $1,200 since last April, and that was from 13 events. And then we netted about $900 um, before servers were paid. So that's how we counted our financials up to this year. I assume with doing more events, you'll have to hire more servers to help. Yes. Um, how is that incorporated into your business plan and what's your approach to that? Yes, so we hire students that we know personally and that we can get recommendations from, from teachers and from friends. So we know that they have to have a certain level of accountability and professionalism. And then we also have a training that we are hoping to implement soon. So we have already hired two to three other servers that have worked for us in the past and we're hoping to hire more. And these would be independent contractors, not employees. And have you had return customers? We have. So most of our customers, we just worked a prom party from a customer we worked a graduation party for a year ago. Um, so our biggest marketing channel is also word of mouth. That's really huge for us. Yeah. What did you learn from your market validation that, that you have found to be most interesting as to kind of motivating you to keep going? Mm -hmm. So one thing we found is that caterers are also really interested in hiring Pressed Apron. We just sent out a market research survey and several caterers actually commented and responded, hey, we have people who cancel on us last minute, we could really use someone like you. So that's another avenue that we're hoping to market towards and that would be different than our normal target market. Uh, have you thought about um, maybe making an app? Like, have you ever thought about making an app like a, a Uber for catering, like a catering for like Uber? We have not thought of that yeah. exact idea, but that's great. Yeah. We would love to think about that more. Yeah, we're hoping to include sort of uh, to develop an online training database so we can hire um, employees who can get trained online, so we can certify that they still have the same standards of professionalism, even if we're not there to train them specifically. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcoming to the stage is uh, we're welcoming Golden Cow Cafe and Roselia Rodriguez. Today, my team and I are here to present to you um, the Golden Cow Cafe, which is our business idea. Uh, the concept for our cafe is a coffee shop that offers coffee drinks. It is a hipster aesthetic environment um, that also doubles as a workplace. The service is fast, can handle rush hours, large crowds, embodies school spirit. The layout is also strategically planned so that there's no like 
crowding and people can appreciate all of these things. And we also plan to have an online presence. Now, we saw this opportunity knock on our door when we realized how lucky Anacapa School is to be so close to downtown. We have Handlebar, Starbucks, French Press, all literally a block away from us. And we were thinking about our buddies at Santa Barbara High and how they have to walk four to six blocks to get to those places. Or if they're lucky seniors, they can drive. <laughs> we thought to look at a map of where Santa Barbara lies and where the nearest coffee places are. And if you can see even on the Milpas side, the closest ones are Winchell's and McDonald's, which are several blocks down if you've ever driven down Milpas. So we thought a coffee shop right near Santa Barbara High School would be a fantastic opportunity. Now, some people still at Santa Barbara High drive a few blocks skip a couple classes to go get their pumpkin spice lattes and iced chais. But here's a reason why they might stop doing that once they are introduced to us, which we would be much more convenient location for them to visit. Apart from that, our service is much higher. This is our value proposition. Um, the scores are one through five, one being the lowest quality job five being the highest quality, and then all of these different categories are things that are valuable to our potential customers. They are ranked from a survey that we conducted via Instagram, um, from most important to least important. So as you can see, we score much higher than our competitors in the more important categories, which is why we believe that they would all be much more attracted to our business than having to walk or drive for 20 minutes to go get a cup of coffee. Now, in our market, we wanted to include people ages 13 and up who consume coffee beverages. That would include both high school students and adults living and working in the area. Um, so Santa Barbara High School, we did some research. Santa Barbara High School claims to have 2,200 students enrolled, approximately. The city of Santa Barbara says that 17,700 people live within a square mile in the area. So if we take our CDC and Villanova University statistics that 73% of children consume caffeine products and 90% of adults are caffeine consumers, and then from there we take an 82.6% who would pay for our optimum price of $3, we end up with a target market of approximately 14,000 customers. Now the 82.6% um, was actually taken from a survey that we conducted in class where we asked people what their mix, maximum willingness to pay was, and we decided that our optimal price would be $3, and the percentage of caffeine consumers that would pay for that price is 82.6. Now, 14,480 people drinking coffee doesn't necessarily mean that everyone is going to come to us, considering that we have competitors. However, considering that you can also make coffee at home, um, we, decided that a reasonable estimate for sales daily, also based off of those numbers and also based off of um, our competitors' sales is approximately 500 units sold daily, which is what we use um, in our financial projections later on. So our business model is, again, a coffee shop near Santa Barbara High School. Our con customers are very happy because they have a place to work, they have fast service, they have a convenient place to go um, furthermore, our name and our theme contributes to um, the sort of school, school spirit, school pride, and excitement of Santa Barbara High School and the families that live in the area. And our fast service through a pickup window that we have planned for our layout outside and other methods that we use to sort of improve our service and our customers' experience keep us very competitive. So um, our marketing is going to be targeted in the local community, including Santa Barbara High. <laughs> As you can see, here is an example of what a printed ad might look like. Um, in the middle is an actual screenshot of an Instagram post from us. Um, earlier this week, uh, we're just starting out. This is just a concept. But um, as you can see, we already have somewhat of a following. Um, and then. 
our distribution would be at our store location, and we're currently working on planning to uh, develop an online ordering system, either via our website or either via an app that we might develop um, that will facilitate a student's ability to just come by, grab their coffee, and run back to class. Because we don't like truancies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the financial projections for our coffee shop um, are in the following slides. Um, the business is planned to break even within the ninth month of business in the, any given year. Um, we would have 97,000 units sold when we break even, and that means that we would have spent and earned both $290,000 per unit, or for all of our 97,000 units. Um, here is more detail about what our financial plan might look like. Um, to the left is our cash flow projection for the first three years of business. To the right is our profit for those same three years. Um, you can see our costs, our revenue, our invested dividend, <laughs> and our um, net profit and net cash flow. As you can see, the Golden Cow Cafe is a profitable business. Um, running a coffee shop can get very expensive. So uh, um, our funds needed are on the bigger scale. Um, we would be planning to take out a $100,000 loan that we would pay off within the first three years. As you can see in our cash flow projection, um, it's right up at the top. And then we would also have $250,000 from equity investors. Um, the loan would have a 7.75% interest rate, and the dividend for the investors is 5%. Um, the dividend might seem kind of low, but in perspective, the investors do own a share of their business, and if the business were ever to sell, they, they would receive their share of that selling price. Uh, we are run by our beautiful team. Um, this is us. So definitely a competitive space, right? Yeah. Um, I just think of the operational costs and just how difficult existing players are just trying to m continue to focus on their growth. Mm -hmm. um, but you can bank on ambiance and experience. I think that's, I saw that in your differentiation. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me about, tell me about your, your like, your true competitive advantage and the products and services, the product, the pro tr your okay. true competitive advantage. Yeah, so our true competitive advantage lies in how fast our service will be. As we said, we, had a, we have an outdoor window that sort of um, is similar to what like a drive-through window is, except for pedestrians. Um, so that's definitely going to be a benefit for people who just want to come in and grab their coffee and go, and people who want to come in and sort of stay and do homework or do work um, within the space inside we have provided that would be the thing that sort of sets us apart from most coffee shops. I think most coffee shops that exist in the area are either walk in and you have to sort of wiggle your way among chairs and things like that, um, or you have to actually drive through the drive through um, So that's definitely what I'd say sets us apart. In terms of our product, we would be selling coffee at the quality of like Handlebar, for example, where it's very um, focused, very artisanal and things sort, um, but at a much lower price than Handlebar, which I um, can go back to this slide. Um, so as you can see, in terms of prices, Handlebar would be the red line, and Golden Cow Cafe would be the um, yellow line. Uh, we are much cheaper than Handlebar. Um, we are not cheaper than Starbucks, but Starbucks coffee is um, of a different quality, and Starbucks services is also of a different quality. So. What does your menu look like? 
Like, is it just... I'm going to have to call. That oh. was time. <laughs> Although I know you have more good questions. <laughs> thank you, judges, and thank you, team. We're talking blue trade here, all right, with Mary Carlo. Have you ever purchased an amazing piece of clothing that you were just dying to show to the world? But then, when you go outside, you realize that there's five other people wearing the exact same thing. Yeah, I've been there too. My name is Mary Carlos, and I'm speaking on behalf of Blue Trade. Within the apparel industry, we have recognized that most individuals want to wear their personalities, but are unable to because of the limited variety. It also requires up to 1,500 gallons of water and tons of harsh chemicals to produce one denim item alone. And even then, there's an overflow of textile waste. And this is where Blue Trade comes in. I will now have one of my fellow co-founders bring in some samples. We create customized upcycled denim items so that every consumer can feel confident and be environmentally friendly. This is our attempt to convince others that their old items may not be a waste after all. This is the base of our website. So we have our custom design where users can either take a survey to help us create the perfect product just for them, or they can just shop our best-selling products. We will also have a feature where users can donate their items in exchange for a coupon code that could only be used once. We want to do this so that we can encourage people to donate their items and not just throw them away. If a user chooses to do a custom design, they would have to take a survey, we would take it, create an outline on Photoshop, send it to the user with two different designs to see which one they like best, get back their feedback, and create the finalist product and ship them within two weeks. This is our market opportunity. We are targeting teens in the Santa Barbara County. Within the Santa Barbara County, there are around 450,000 people, 75,000 of them being teens. Our competitors include Etsy, Envy Studio LA, and Happiness. Etsy is an online business that where other businesses are able to sell their own handcrafted products, um, but they vary from decor to furniture and jewelry. Envy Studio LA is a high-end denim business, and Happiness is a fixer-upper where they take damaged and unwanted clothes and tailor them. All of these are great businesses, but none of them are exactly environmentally friendly. And even then, they don't have the exact customization that we want to implement. We will market through our website and blog, social media, and influencers. Our website is our main source of income, but we will also have a blog where users can actively interact with us and also see the effects that denim has on the environment. As for social media, we will be using Instagram to um, create posts and have daily motivational quotes where users can be encouraged to go out of the comfort zone and bring in their creativity side. We'll use YouTube. We'll be posting 10-second video ads um, of models and kind of just show what we're really about. As for influencers, they're a great way to bring in brand awareness. We have to choose someone whose views align with ours send them a product made specifically just for them, have them post, model, post it on their Instagram with our hashtag and tag us. This is our revenue model. An average product costs around $45, with a cost per unit of 15, which includes labor and cost of materials. If we sell 60 units being a full-time student this year, starting in the summer, we will bring a revenue of 2,000 with a year profit of $1,250. My team includes myself, Mary Carlos, Natalia Monza, and Megan Vega, with advisor Jillian Heckman, the SMEA Entrepreneurship Director. We are seeking 1,000 to cover startup costs. This will include paints, patches, or any materials needed, and the website development. And one last thing before I go, remember to wear denim and do denim with Blue Trade. How long does it take to like create a design? 
Um, one teaching. design takes less than an hour. Have you had any sales? We have not yet. We really want to build the base of our website first, and then once we get that running, that's where we'll start like selling. But before that, we kind of want to give it to family and friends, classmates, anyone who wants to help and support us so that we can get our brand name out in the first place. Can you talk a little bit more about the why? Um, the real global, the real global impact. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, as seen in the slide that my partner Mary Carlos has presented, it takes approximately um, fifteen hundred gallons of water to create one denim, uh, denim item, uh, just through like watering the crops and using it for dyes and other chemicals. Um, so that, that has a real bad impact on the environment, where is it, if it soaks into the soil, there are plants that can't grow there anymore. So the soil is contaminated. So we're hoping to uh, use these secondhand denim items and upscale them so people can buy these rather than buying new ones. So are you shopping at like thrift stores for jackets and then upcyc upcycling them or are we are your customers sending them to you? Um, so it can either be the, cons the customer in exchange for a coupon code, which I mentioned, or uh, we've actually been in contact with some thrift stores and they specifically give us our, their old denim items that, in order to help support us and they, they've given these for free. Can you tell us a little bit more about the customization that you offer and how you decide what to offer? Um, so it kind of includes embroidery, so like any sort of design that they want, or patches, or painting. So those are the three main things that we'll be incorporating. are welcoming to the stage Santa Barbara Tudors and Connie Connaughton. Yeah. Please welcome her to the stage. Hello, my name is Connie Connaughton and I am the founder of Santa Barbara Teen Tutors. Just this year I took a really hard class and I looked out and I reached out for assistance from a tutor. I paid this tutor a lot of money to help me try and pass a test. The tutor was helping me, but what she was teaching me wasn't really what my teacher was teaching me. She didn't know how my class was structured and the way that my teacher was teaching. So here we have introducing Santa Barbara Teen Tutors, tutoring by teens for teens. The problem is that in Santa Barbara County, students are struggling. They're taking hard classes and trying to succeed. So they try and hire tutors so that they can do well. But these tutors charge absurd amount of money, and they don't know what's happening in the students' classes. They don't know how to prepare them best for their teacher or for the assignments and tests that they're going to have to submit. Our solution is a platform that matches struggling students with qualified teen tutors. These students, we find students that aren't doing so well in their classes and match them with students that are. Students that have taken the same classes and that know how to succeed in that class. The process is that you reach out to Santa Barbara Teen Tutors, either through our website, social media, or any form of contact, and we match you with one of our many Santa Barbara Teen Tutors. What you need to specify first is your school, class, teacher, and what you need help with. You are then matched with your tutor, and then you meet for a tutoring session. The competition in Santa Barbara is through our local colleges, such as UCSB, SBCC, and Westmont. We also have private tutoring companies, such as Leading Edge Tutors, College Bound, and SB Tutoring. All of these have in common that they're all educated people, but they don't know how they can make a high school student succeed. So our marketing analysis is that there are three high schools in Santa Barbara County. That leaves a total of 6,000 students, not even including the additional 1,000 students from private high schools. This is a total market of a lot of students that need help with their classes. We intend to market through our website, Santa Barbara Teen Tutors, 
as well as through social media, such as Instagram and Facebook. We also would like to do face-to-face -face, face -face interaction with the schools and teachers and let them know what students, or just, um, they tell us what students need help and what students can be suggested to be tutors. Tutoring sessions are $30 an hour and will be split 50-50 with the Santa Barbara team tutors and 15 for the tutor. We expect to have 20 sessions a month at $30 per session. This is based off of a one hour session, but most sessions can range from one to three, whatever the student needs. And we estimate for an overall $7,200 revenue. That would be a total profit of $3,600. Our team is myself, I'm the CEO and founder of Santa Barbara Team Tutors. Our advisors are Ray Largura, a local owner of Leading Edge Tutors, as well as Jeffrey Smith, a Nike, a former Nike marketing executive, and Jillian and Jamie DeVries from San Marcos Entrepreneurship Academy and directors of Kids Helping Kids. Thank you very much for listening. Any questions? Thanks for your presentation. Um, I had a question in terms of uh, you demoing this. Have you talked to students who want to tutor, who want to be tutored? Have you tested this out in practice yet? So I currently am a tutor myself, so I work with doing, I just have a few students that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, and I also have talked to other students that are interested in being tutors, that are doing well in their classes, and are looking to make a little cash on the side, as well as other students that are looking to be mentored by another student. How do you make money? Um, we make money through the payment coming in from the tutoring session. So like, you hire other tutors in the classes or you take a percentage of what they make? So each session is $30. The uh -huh. 15 will go to the tutor and 15 will go to Santa Barbara Team Tutors. Uh -huh. So it'd be split 50-50. So you're facilitating the link through an uh, online website, an online platform? Yeah, so it's okay. just a facilitation between students and tutors. So if I'm like a student that's a tutor, why would I use your platform and not just like put up sign up in class saying that I'm tutoring? How do you compete with students since they're in the same class? Well, Santa Barbara Teen Tutors is able to find students that really need the help and are able to specifically market to that I have taken this class and I can help you with that because I have experience in that. How do you plan on verifying that experience apart from grades? We plan to first go through and make sure that our tutors are well advanced and know what they're doing by um, checking out their transcripts, having teacher recommendations, and evidence that they are succeeding in their classes. Thank you so much. Thank for your you time. so much. All righty, and last but definitely not least, we are welcoming to the stage Rough Cut and Trevor Eubank. <laughs> When it comes to marketing and business, first impressions are everything. Over the last 10 years, our culture has become increasingly more visually oriented, making having good marketing content um, in, in, sorry, essential to running a successful business. My name is Trevor Eubank, and over the last three years, I have worked as a freelance photographer and videographer with a number of Santa Barbara's small businesses. Over this time, I have experienced a, a two significant issues within this business market. The first is that a number of these small, mostly small business, small businesses within Santa Barbara County lack the significant budget 
to required to work with a professional marketing agency or production company to create this marketing content that they so desperately need to be effective. And um, as a result of that, they are required to make the marketing content themselves, often resulting in ineffective um, content, which just pulls back their potential for possible sales and pulling them back further um, for what they could potentially be doing. At the same time, we have a large number of um, potential um, and capable and experienced young uh, freelancers, such as photographers, graphic designers, and video producers, such as myself and the people in the San Mar uh, at the Santa Barbara Mad Academy, um, all the way up to 30-year-olds who are doing it in a more professional context, yet they are struggling to find enough work to make a sustainable income. That is where my company, RoughCut, steps in. RoughCut is a platform that connects these two groups and works as a networking and production tool that allows these two groups to connect and work towards, um, work towards a common goal of creating professional marketing content for a fraction of the price to the local businesses. Some of the features that RoughCut will be using includes a profile portfolio page where some of these independent contractors can display their past work. As well as that, they will have a media upload system on the site that allows you to share drafts of your projects back and forth so that you can make sure that you get something that the businesses are satisfied with. As well as that, there will be an integrated messaging system so that you can communicate back and forth between the two parties. An independent contractor rating system will be used to ensure that the uh, businesses can review the, the independent contractor that they've worked on with the past and allowing new uh, clients to make sure that they're getting the right person for the job. The final step is this um, integrated payment system through a third party application such as PayPal to protect and make sure that all of these different transactions are protected and um, that they go through the site. Our revenue model begins when an independent contractor signs onto the app for the first time. In the app, they will have, or in the app, um, application, they will have the option to set a price point, an hourly wage that they value themselves at. When a business contracts with them and they go through all the steps of creating the media, in the end, the business will submit 100% of the payment through the, um, through the platform. RoughCut will take 13% of the payment and pocket 10% while using 3% to cover the PayPal processing fees that they require. In the end, the independent contractor takes 87% of the total payment as compensation for their work. Marketing is a big thing, um, and it's the entire goal of RoughCut. We will be using social media, a social media presence to find potential users. Because when it comes to a lot of these people who are gonna be working as the independent contractors, they will already have a significant social media presence which they are already largely using to find potential clients. That is why these, potential, that's why these platforms offer us a view into what they've already been doing and the struggles that they may have um, in finding new work. Through people such as Chris Burkhard, who is a professional photographer, we hope to reach out to him um, and work to, with him to develop the best site possible, as well as using people like him to promote our website and promote the service to people who maybe want to get where he's gone in a more professional setting. As well as that, we will be working with the Santa Barbara Chamber of Commerce to find struggling businesses who can use the help of these independent contractors to create the next level of marketing media needed for their site to succeed, or for their business to succeed. When doing market research, we surveyed a number of independent contractors who might be interested in this platform. An overwhelming 88.9% showed an interest in, interest in this platform. On the business side, we were surprised to find that there are 25,000 small businesses located within Santa Barbara County. We hope to attain a 1% market penetration over the first year, giving us an estimated 259 projects over that first year.
if we go just above that 1% market penetration. By, taking by pocketing $15, $15 from each of those jobs, we could be looking at a total revenue of $3,885 over 2019 alone. When we subtract the total costs of $2,502, we are left with a total profit in 2019 of $1,383. Over the years to come, that would only grow. Because a large portion of the first um, half of 2019 would be covering just the soft launch and the processing and um, creation of the site before it has even launched, we would not be selling over the entire year. We'd only be launching around June. Over the next year, in 2020, we would predict to almost hit $8,000 in total profit. The following year, in 2021, we would be going over $10,000 in total profit. Our team is made up of myself and my good friend, Brian Arzmendi, and together we are the founding members of Rough Cut. In addition to that, our good friends, Jamie DeVries and Jillian Heckman, are, have agreed to be the advisors um, for our company. We are looking for a $2,500 loan to cover the costs of creating the site in the first place leading up to the soft launch, as well as some of the marketing expenses and some of the cheaper costs of running a domain and hosting a website. It's been an honor to pitch to you. Do you have any questions? How do you differentiate yourself from Fiverr? Yeah, so that's a great um, question. We've done research into how Fiverr and Upwork and Angie's List work because they're very similar um, platforms to what this would be. However, um, when we actually create an account um, as someone who would maybe potentially want to use that, um, we found that a lot of these job postings aren't in any sort of marketing um, or media production role. A lot of them are in all sorts of independent contracting things, so we want to specifically focus down and be um, in a platform that's specifically designed for the media production and marketing roles um, that independent contractors would play. Um, for instance, we were looking at just how a lot of these sites lack some sort of um, sus like a sustainable media upload system. Um, a lot of them have a 25 mega megabyte limit on the files that you can send, which is just maybe a single picture. What we want to be able to do is send drafts of the, um, like of the entire video back and forth between the clients to make sure that you're able to come up with something that you potentially want to post as a commercial or um, something down the line along that. If I'm a local business that mm -hmm. is looking for marketing help and I can't afford a big deal agency, how do you convince me that your solution is the right solution in terms of professionalism and quality of the product that you deliver? Yeah, that's a great question. The beauty of the profile portfolio page that we would have on the site is that these businesses get to look over the past work of these independent contractors to make sure that you they are viable and that they're offering services that would be worth paying that amount of money for. So really, we let the independent contractors' work speak for themselves by posting it on the, um, on the platform. No, nothing sells video like a great video. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I would have loved to have seen a demo of just you go to town and, in terms of capability. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, my only questions were about the two sides of the marketplace. How do you, how do you plan to tackle that? Mm -hmm. So time's up, I think. Do you want to still have time to answer that question? Or? You can go ahead and answer. Okay. Um, so, sorry, let me make sure I'm getting the right question. How would we tackle finding both sides? Or Okay, yeah. So a lot of these um, independent contractors are going to be um, they're trying to establish themselves as a brand. They're reaching out to all sorts of things. A lot of it, though, is just personal um, connections um, that networking has allowed them to do in the past. What we want to do is allow them to expand this um, networking capability by kind of doing, I don't want to say Tinder, but it's kind of a similar thing where it's like you are going to be, businesses are going to be able to look through a range of different um, clients um, and independent contractors that they are willing to work with. On the business side, we have, um, we're looking into connections with the Santa Barbara Chamber of Commerce to see if um, 
to use them to find these potential businesses who are struggling in this area. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so the judges had to work really hard, they tell me, over this break to identify the winners, but they tell me that they have done it. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to our judges. All right. Thank you, Julie. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, thank you to the, the SBB Santa Barbara uh, City College, the NBC competition, to the, my awesome co-judges. And then I want to give a hands of applause, if we could give a round of applause for the coaches and the coaches and mentors. Um, Cause I, cause I know, I know behind every Gary, every great idea is a, is a coach's corner. So that, that value is, can't, can be overemphasized. And to the entrepreneurs, I think braving the stage, that's awesome. And I, I felt you had tremendous energy. You, you brought it, you, your pitches were on fire from a visual standpoint, from a passion standpoint, from let's dig in and see if there's a real opportunity here standpoint. Um, you know, the world is your oyster. I think, I think we all believe that in here. And I'm excited about the ideas, inspired by all of the ideas, truly. There's so much potential and so much real market, um, market opportunity if you were to continue to pursue and validate. Um, and then the beautiful thing I want to say is I, I enjoy the privilege for being up here, as, as I'm sure all the other uh, the co-judges, um, is we have an opportunity in this room to continue to define our ecosystem. Northern and, Santa, uh, Northern and Southern Santa Barbara County. So I'm excited to be a part of that. And um, I just wanted to say that, keep pushing, keep pressing, keep doing what you're doing. You're gonna connect to amazing opportunities. It's just getting started. So I'll go ahead and let Rochelle, yeah. Hello everybody. Um, so I'm a former student at SBCC, and like you, I also used to compete in competitions like this, and I just want to let you know that I didn't win one competition. I always got second place, which was like, it's like third place, so uh, if you didn't win today, that's okay. Um, when you don't win, it actually makes you work harder, and it makes you stronger, so be grateful whether you win or don't win, but also if you win, that's awesome, so I just wanted to say <laughs> that to you. Um, everyone's awesome. So for third place, we have Fiona Kinsella Designs. Uh, second place, we have One for One. For first place, we have. <laughs> we have Frost Apron. Uh, Fiona Kinsella Designs, we are really impressed that you're already up and operating. Uh, you have some beautiful designs, you're already in stores, so. Uh, you're doing amazing. You basically are already running a business. So congratulations. And, <laughs> and for one for one, and we were really impressed with uh, your social, like wanting to give back the Tom's like model. I thought that was awesome. As well as like the personalization of water bottles. So like if you look at millennials, they like companies that give back as well as their own, um, you know, customization of things. So we thought those two things were awesome. And for Pressed Apron, uh, we actually all would like your card because we need uh, your services. But also, uh, one of my advisors, Paul Orfla, said that there's riches and niches. And I really feel like you found, you know, there was like a need in a market and you're, you're going after it. So that was amazing. So, yeah. So I, I just want to say thank you so much for celebrating entrepreneurship with us and just know that the Scheinfeld Center is here for you and a, a support for you as you continue to move on in your entrepreneurial journey. And we just so admire 
the students and also the teachers and the mentors who have brought these students forward. You're doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. So we hope that we'll see you again here next year. And um, we also will be having some cool events. Uh, there's uh, going to be a Shark Tank competition happening in November um, based on an accelerator that we're launching um, actually next next month and so that could be a future opportunity for for you as college students so lots to look forward to okay I think it's a wrap then thanks everybody Thank you.